So today we're out on the road in the BMW 128Ti. Now when this car was actually introduced sort of late last year in 2020, I was actually really excited about it. Obviously the new M135i xDrive that was released in this new generation of one series, this had some mixed reviews. Um, we've gone from that glorious, quite frankly, three liter B58 straight six down to a 306 horsepower, two liter B48 four cylinder engine. And for a lot of people, you know, that, that was a mark that maybe BMW had gone past its best and the new 135i was just never quite going to live up to that rear wheel drive six cylinder of the previous gen M140 and M135i. So yeah, and of course we've moved to all wheel drive in that new M135i as well. So maybe for some people this just wasn't going to be as fun a car as the previous gen. However, with the 128Ti, this to me seems to offer something that maybe that M135i is lacking. Now, I want to point out, I actually haven't had a chance to drive the M135i yet from the new generation, but I'm going to judge this car and really how it is to drive, because I think that's the most important thing. Now, under the bonnet, we've got a two liter B48 unit, um, and it puts out 265 horsepower, 295 foot-pounds of torque. Now, the interesting bit here is it's front wheel drive. So straight away, you're going to be thinking this is probably going to be a lot more fun. And in the driving I've done so far, it really has been. But shortly, we'll take it out on some better roads and I'll talk a bit more about that. Now, the 128Ti starts at just under £34,000 in the UK. So I would actually say it's fairly competitively priced in, in regards to sort of the other hot hatches out there. Kind of like this kind of power level and uh, overall quality, I suppose. Now it's got a eight speed ASIN transmission, so it isn't the ZF in this. And you know what, I think, I think it's a pretty good transmission overall. Um, it's perhaps a little bit clunky at times. The ZF overall, I actually find is a little bit of smoother transmission. It works a bit better. But in the front wheel drive platforms, the ASIN still does a pretty good job to be fair. Pretty quick responses. And the ratios are pretty nice as well. The quality, as you'd expect on the new BMW on the inside, is as much as anyone could want. Everything feels nice. I love these seats. They're really, really supportive and hold you in very nicely through these tight, twisty roads we're on. And yeah, everything just feels premium. I know in the previous one series, that was pretty much the case as well, to be honest. Everything felt good, but this is a much more up-to-date interior, sort of more in line with the new three and four series and things that have come out more recently. So yeah, it's fantastic. And I really, really like the dials in this. We haven't got those funny digital ones that are in the new cars where you know the revs wrap up one side the speed reps up the other side which i was never a massive fan of but these are brilliant it's kind of like a digital version of analog dials and i think it works really really well now i just wanted to take a little bit of an exterior walk around of the new bmw 128i and that's because there are a few subtle tweaks done to the styling of this car that i actually think look really really cool now you can see running down the side we've got a red sort of stripe on the bottom of that side skirt, leading into a very nice TI graphic. Now, of course, TI sort of harks back to the prior times, really, back in the 90s. Um, this was a term that was starting to be used by BMW, and essentially what it means is Turismo Internazionale, something like that. I think it's an Italian word, but it basically just means international tourism in English. So you used to see this on a few of the, uh, I think it was the E36 and E46 compacts. So yeah, it's quite cool to see this name revived, actually, and I like how much effort they put into making it feel a little bit different to a normal one series and even the m135i actually the front end is something obviously that's going to divide opinion quite a bit the front grille in my opinion is just a little bit too big um but i think overall it looks pretty good i really like these red accents down here and these do actually feed air around the wheel presumably for aerodynamic reasons actually nice uh, sort of aggressive looking front splitter and grills on the front and i just think it looks great it's real road presence as usual with a lot of these m sport bmws so down at the wheels then, we've got these really cool looking 19 inch uh, alloys by M Sport, of course. I think they look great. There's kind of like a nice uh, attention to detail on the things. It's not overly complicated, but it's enough to make this car look sporty. And that's really what it's all about. So I don't know about you, but I actually really, really like the back of the new one series, especially in this TI spec. A little bit of a fake diffuser going on here. A little bit plasticky for my liking, actually. But you know, what? it finishes off the design quite nicely. We've got these little red accents down the side again and some very cool kind of blacked out tailpipes. So, you know, it's, this is perfectly good for this kind of level of car, I think, and it really rounds off the design very nicely.
So, onto some better roads then, and that's where this car really, really comes alive. It just feels fantastic. We've actually got a torsion limited slip differential up the front, which allows for a 31% locking factor on acceleration and a 26% locking factor on deceleration. So obviously 265 horsepower through the front wheels is quite a bit actually, and you know, it's gonna take a decent differential to handle that, and this works really, really well. So what I'm gonna do here is just do a quick launch. We'll just put it into the sport mode, turn the traction control down. And another thing, obviously two wheel drive, it's never gonna launch as hard, but let's just see how it does. And there's 60. That's pretty good. It certainly feels pretty fast. There wasn't too many traction issues off the start actually, and it revs out so well. This engine feels great. 295 foot-pounds of torque is obviously quite a bit. Let's just chuck it into here. Yeah, God, I can really feel that diff working there. I actually really like the way this engine sounds as well. There is quite a bit of fakery coming through the speakers, as is usual these days, and BMW actually claimed that it's an authentic sound. It's just the engine sound amplified, and that definitely sounds to be the case. It certainly sounds like a four-cylinder. Actually sounds like there's quite a bit of induction noise, but again, probably a bit of fakery going on there. transmission as well it's just brilliant nice snappy shifts as I said the gear ratios are great actually really gets up and goes when you're on the power I suppose we better mention the brakes as well because they're pretty powerful we've got 360 mil discs on the front with a four piston aluminium monoblock caliper, floating caliper on the, rear, on the rear wheels, but you know what, it's more stopping power than you're ever gonna need, really. It's just so much fun to drive. I absolutely love the way this thing feels, and the front end's got so much traction to give. We're running a Bridgestone Potenza tire, and apparently there's a Michelin Pilot Sport 4 tire that is a no-cost option. This car obviously doesn't have that, but to be honest, I'm quite surprised at how much grip this tyre is offering. It certainly feels very capable. Surprisingly as well, the ride isn't too busy. Over the standard car, it's 10 millimetres lower, but I've got it dialed up in the sport mode now and it's riding these bumps really well. So even with that torque steer and when you're getting on the power, it's not sort of darting all over the place and jumping around Overall, it feels very, very settled and makes you feel like you could really push on in the thing with quite a bit of confidence. You can really feel the diff there. Just laying the power down beautifully. Let's chuck it in here then, see what it does. The chassis itself actually feels really well balanced. It doesn't really feel like you're getting much back end movement. It feels like the front end digs in and the rear end follows really, really nicely round. I'm actually a big fan of how this engine builds power as well. I'm quite familiar with the B48 itself. And some of the sort of more detuned models feel like they tend to get a little bit asthmatic in the higher rev ranges, just because the engine's held back so much. But this actually feels like it pulls quite nicely right up to the 6,500 RPM rev limiter. And of course, there's a big chunk of torque there as well. It just really makes this thing move down those roads. Interestingly, this car is actually 80 kilograms lighter than the M135i X-Drive of the same generation. And I think that to me is going to be quite a big factor because these cars are quite heavy. This car in particular weighs about 1,445 kilograms. So it's not a light thing for a one series, you know, that's quite heavy. So any weight saving, you know, over like the M135 X-Drive, which obviously weighs even more than that, is going to be a great thing. It's just so much fun. It's really made for these types of roads, you know, these B roads. God, the front end is just fantastic. 
actually struggling to find the limit of grip. It's quite impressive. Okay, so let's slow it down a little bit then and conclude what we actually think about this thing. So as I've mentioned, at the price point, it feels really, really competitive actually in terms of what you can get these days. And the driving experience, well, I mean, it feels fantastic. Hopefully you can get a sense of just how enjoyable it is out on these roads. And it feels very, very well dialed in to these kind of like twistier, bumpier country roads that we have in the UK, which is often not the case with a lot of German performance cars. They tend to get a bit busy, a bit sort of skitty over the, over the bumps and things like that. But this feels really, really nice. So yeah, overall, I'm, I'm really impressed with how this thing drives actually. The power level I feel is, is perfect. You know, for a front wheel drive car, you wouldn't, wouldn't really want to be going much more than that. And the diff seems to handle it well. It certainly doesn't feel slow. You know, not to 60 is in this car, 6.1 seconds top speeds 155 miles an hour so I mean what more do you actually need from a front wheel drive hatchback on the road I think that's pretty much as far as you need to go so yeah I mean in terms of that it feels great as I've mentioned the brakes are kind of like a perfect level I'm not sure how well they'd hold up if you took this thing out on track it's probably not really made for that it's more of a road bias car but in terms of road use yeah very very powerful brakes it reminds me a lot of my JCW actually which is running a very similar setup with four piston calipers on the front and it's it's just kind of like there's so much braking power you rarely ever need to kind of push that pedal more than like halfway down so yeah feels very nicely set up for that you've also got the practicality of this car i mean the m135i x drive is just as sort of practical as that you know we've, we've got a five door hatchback tons of boot space you know five seats in here you could easily fit five people in this without an issue so yeah it's it's perfectly usable i mean to me this seems like a great daily driver option especially if you want something you can take out to these better roads on a weekend for example and just enjoy the thing and drive it it's perfectly capable once again i'd like to say a massive thank you to virtue bmw t side for making this review possible as always it's a fantastic group of people down there really appreciate it if you could check out their links in the description below and if you're in the market for a new or used bmw you should definitely check out the stock they've got in